gather around my children. It is time for another emergency meeting of the Beth McGrath Mega Nerds Council. How do you feel about that term? Do you think it applies to us? Let me know in the comments. So this is an impromptu pet pairing. Obviously, we're going to use the Star Wars palettes that were released uh, during the previous round of this limited edition release, which was already several years ago, maybe in 2019 or something. And I'm going to just, you know, do this Jetty Get Ready With Me style, so I'm not going to waste any more time and I'm start going to start applying my makeup. I will tell you maybe here and there what I'm using, but for the most part, we will just focus on chatting. I will give you a bit more of an extensive explanation of what I'm doing with my eyeshadow, because of course, this is still a pet pairing. A lot of you messaged me to ask me what I think about this collection and I gathered a lot of, you know, polarizing opinions uh, along the way. Some of you are really excited and some of you are really disappointed. And once again, I am neither of the two, mostly because this release just came so out of nowhere. I was so, like, not prepared for it that I don't even think that it has completely sunk in um, and that I've really had time to digest it properly. But you know what? It's here, it's coming, we have a week to think about whether we want something from this collection or not. And in the meantime, we can chat a little bit about it. I will be totally honest with you, once the holiday collection items were finally all released, I sort of thought we are kind of done with Pat McGrath uh, releases for the time being. And after New Year, I thought maybe we're going to get a Lunar Nude release or we're going to get another Valentine's Day release, but you never know with her because she hasn't really done either of those consistently to really um, have expectations for that. So I really thought that until the springish time, we are sort of more or less safe in terms of purchases from Pat McGrath. So this whole Star Wars collection uh, release kind of like came out of the blue and once again it is a much more amped version, a much more epic version of the previous Star Wars release. So my understanding is that Mother Pat is a huge Star Wars fan, which is why you know we're seeing these collaborations. She seems pretty particular about her uh, fandom, like she really goes for collaborations with things that she herself really likes. Obviously there is a money component involved, obviously everyone wants to make money, investors, pad, you know, everyone along the chain wants to get a sweet, you know, a piece of the pie and I get that. But at the same time, I don't think these are, you know, completely random. I think she goes for things that she really enjoys and then she collabs with those, no matter how random they may seem to us. And honestly, given Pat's age, I can totally understand why she is a, especially a fan of the original Star Wars trilogy, which this collection seems to be based on. The only thing that surprises me a little bit is the timing of this, because there's literally nothing Star Wars-y coming out anywhere, either on streaming platforms or in the theater, so I'm not really sure where this collection is coming from. But what I feel like may be happening is that she has some sort of like a, a multi-release contract maybe with Disney, so that every few years we're going to get these like Star Wars collaborations. Um, the first one was timed in such a way that it coincided with the release of one of the latest movies from the trilogy, but I can't remember which one. But that's totally irrelevant. The point was that last time this collection was released, there was, you know, actually a Star Wars movie being released. So this just perfectly timed, like the collection release perfectly timed with that. And it was again around the Christmas holidays. And it was wild, you know, that uh, you, you, those of you who have participated in the Pathmograd Madness for um, years know exactly how crazy that whole release was. Um, the two six pan palettes sold out within, I think, a reasonable amount of hours, given that this is this would have attracted obviously both Star Wars fans and Pathmograd fans, and you know people who want to resell this shit on eBay f with a ridiculous markup. And the only thing that I had actually picked up from the original release was this six pan. And I remember that I was not at all stressed about it. I came home from work several hours after this collection had already been made available. And I don't recall feeling like extremely stressed about it. However, during that release, she also had a limited edition Mothership palette. And once again, the Mothership palette was not a new uh, palette. It was the Decadence palette, but then repackaged with, you know, some Star Wars fandom things on it. I 
can't completely recall. I think the outer packaging was gold and it had the Star Wars logo across it. The actual packaging was gold and then maybe there was like a written Star Wars logo across that too. I actually didn't have the Decadence palette at the time and you have no idea how much I was like internally fighting with myself whether I would really like to purchase this palette or not. Thank goodness I decided not to participate in the madness because it was completely wild that thing sold out within I want to say a couple of minutes people were really upset about it it was bonkers okay and it was so stressful I don't I don't really like participating in such stressful releases so I skipped on that release of the decadence palette and I late, later on purchased it on sale still in the gold packaging Yes, it doesn't have the Star Wars uh, logo across it, but to be honest with you, I didn't find the Star Wars logo across to be such a special part of the uh, packaging of that release. So to me, being able to get it in the gold packaging on sale was such a steal. Um, I was really happy to get it that way, and I to this day do not regret that I didn't purchase the limited edition uh, Decadence Star Wars packaging. I don't want to make any predictions about how exactly, how wild exactly this release is going to be. I feel like since Divine Rose 2 she has sort of like chilled a little bit on those exclusive you have to buy it within the few first few seconds of the release or you're going to lose um, kind of mentality. But I can't be sure what she's going for with this release. I get the feeling that's going to be a bit more chill and the products are going to stay around for a bit longer. But uh, don't take my words for that, that's just like some sort of a... Uh, inexplicable gut feeling that I have that the brand hasn't really been doing these like super exclusive releases re lately I could be completely off I could be wrong and these could so sell out in a couple of minutes so if you really want pieces from this collection you will have to be there the moment these are released uh, who I think this collection is for I think this collection is meant for people with a very collector's mentality I don't think this is necessarily targeted towards um, even the nerdy Pat McGrath consumer. I think this is targeted towards a very specific like uh, spot on the Venn diagram where the overlaps counts between, between people who are completely obsessed with Star Wars fandom and want to own everything, uh, especially something that you, you know from a luxury exclusive brand. And then there's the group of Pat McGrath Labs fans who are also huge Star Wars fans. I think these are the two specific groups that are being targeted with these releases. I don't necessarily think the general consumer or even the general Pat McGrath Labs consumer are being targeted with those because as you will see and we will talk about it in a little bit when we go over the individual products, there's a lot a lot of repetition here. So I've got trend modes post here next to me so that I can tell you exactly what's in this collection because it's pretty large and I don't want to uh, miss on anything. What I'm seeing is a Mothership palette, three of those little quins similar to the ones we got for the uh, holiday collection. Um, I'm also seeing three of her liquid lipsticks, the liquid lasts. There are also four cream pot eyeshadow so that's new we haven't seen any of that before and there are some colored mascaras is that all oh yeah there are also some glosses yeah there are three colored mascaras and her i think original dark star mascara but then again with the star wars logo slapped across it now I'm going to start with the products that I have absolutely no interest in purchasing or really talking about extensively and those are uh, the colored mascaras and the normal mascaras like I said those are going to be for the absolute you know Star Wars Pat McGrath nerds out there I didn't have interest when these were released uh, with the uh, Celestial Nirvana collection and I don't have any interest in them now. Liquilus, I also have no interest in. Liquid lipsticks are not a product that I've ever particularly enjoyed and I'm more than happy to um, spare my money from purchasing products that I'm never going to use. The glosses are cute but I already have quite a few of Pat's glosses and I don't know whether some of these are repetitions of things I already have. Okay, the glosses are going to be Bronze, Venus, Pale Fire Nectar and Carnal Desire. I don't think I actually have any of these glosses, but to be honest with you, I would rather just wait for a sale with her lip products and get them when they are super discounted because her lip glosses are really wonderful. I do really, really like her lip glosses, but I don't think that I would uh, go and purchase them full price. 
I am going to take the little Bridgerton wheel for my blush today. That is the first Pat McGrath product that I'm dipping into today. She's not really releasing any sort of like uh, normal lipsticks or lip balms or any sort of like other finishes. It's just the liquid lust and the glosses. What is... I think more interesting to talk about obviously are going to be the eyeshadows and there is quite a variety of different products that are being released here. I am also going to take the uh, highlighter from this palette even though I don't actually uh, like it but I'm too lazy to go into my drawers now and pick up another one. So the uh, Mothership palette. I think we lost all lost our shit a little bit when there was, you know, even the, the suggestion that there would be another Mothership palette. Now, the matter of fact is that since the original release of the Trio Totale and then the very surprising release of the Divine Rose 1 palette, which was the second palette to be re released in the same year after Midnight Sun, we haven't really gotten like two Motherships per year since that time. But the Mothership palette, she is re-releasing um, a repackaged version of <laughs> Midnight Sun and the outside cardboard packaging is it looks a little bit like a poster like something that you would hang up on your wall and I'm all for it it looks very you know um, 70s in I think it's a really nice throwback to the movies from the 70s because you know you see the original characters from the 70s depicted there there's like a really huge uh, image of Darth Vader all cool I don't mind that at all but then for whatever reason, she went and slept on that very same image on the outer black lacquered box packaging. And that's the part that really confuses me because I think that makes the palette look really tacky. I'm sorry, I really don't like it. I don't mind the outer box packaging. Like if that would stand here on my vanity, I would look at it, you know, and um, enjoy it because I enjoy Star Wars. I'm specifically a fan of the original trilogy. So I would not mind at all having, you know, pet slash Star Wars on my vanity here. But I don't know what it is about the outside box, like the black lacquered box, that I prefer that to be like a clean, elegant design. And I don't like, I really don't like that poster-like thing being slapped on that. It's just, it just looks super weird and it kind of like cheapens the whole, you know, outer box. I don't really know why this was necessary. I guess it increases the collector's value, but not my style. All right, I have zoomed you in and like I said, we're going to do a look featuring basically all the three original palettes that were released. I'm going to start off with the um, C3PO palette here, which I always uh, show you upside down. So the C3PO palette here, and I'm going to start with a shade that is in fact the repeat from one of her opulence six pants. And that is this shade over here. That is the shade Corruption, which is this very interesting like burgundy, bronzy, greeny, and thick. You know what you're going to be able to see? I'm just going to try and like shift here in different lighting so that you can maybe catch glimpses of that. That is one one of her like first sort of like more multi-chrome type shades. I don't really think that it's like a true multi-chrome. It's more of a duochrome, but it has quite a nice variety of different shifts in it. She hasn't ever released actually a new Mothership palette um, in support of these Star Wars collaborations, which I find quite frankly a little bit lazy because I think it's a missed opportunity. And I think it could be something uh, really, really epic, very sparkly, very inspired, you know, by outer space, by the, you know, clothes that they're wearing, especially Princess Leia. But Unfortunately, she chooses to repackage older palettes and sell them uh, under the Star Wars logo. And what I find very surprising is the choices of the motherships. I don't think they're completely random, but I also don't think that they are like super, super well thought through and really like, oh, I think uh, this specific mothership is inspired by these specific movies. Um, I can see how Decadence and Midnight Sun are the two motherships that would really like fit with the theme of Star Wars. But at the same time, I, fi I find the choice of these motherships to be a little bit also like random at the same time. And what I find very ironic is that both of these palettes tend to be like underdogs in her collection. Uh, Decadence has always been, you know, an underdog in her collection because it's an all metallic palette. It doesn't have any of her baked shades. It doesn't really have any matte shades. So people are a little bit cautious about Decadence. And Midnight Sun, despite being one of her most versatile color stories, 
tends to go a little bit under the radar because I think people find the color story a bit jumbled and in support of that that palette has been on sale like 40% off basically since the summer. You can still find, I went on her website yesterday just to make sure that that palette is still on sale. You can buy Midnight Sun in the original packaging which is still really gorgeous for 74 euros right now. Why would you spend 128 just for that outside cardboard box? If you really want that cardboard box, just like fucking print out a poster of Star Wars and hang it up above your Pat McGrath shrine. That's what I would do. But you know, there are collectors out there who think very differently about, uh, you know, collecting stuff. I don't have collector's mentality, so I can't really explain how that works. So I'm sure that a lot of people are going to buy, you know, seconds of that palette even though they already have the original to just put somewhere in a in a in a box or in a drawer and just keep there forever and ever without ever opening it um i i don't really have that kind of mentality i don't really understand that kind of mentality but i also don't want to like judge you do you it's your money you know i it could be considered a little bit wasteful but i also understand if you're like a real fan of bolt pad and star wars and you really want to own these items for the fact that they represent both brands you know it's fine, you do you. So I'm basically packing that shade a little bit here and just lightly blending it upwards. I'm going to apply a shade from a different palette now onto the rest of my uh, lids. So I don't really know that there's more to say about um, the mothership that's being released because it's just Midnight Sun, you know. It's good old Midnight Sun. And the fact is that because it was on sale for such a long time, a lot of people just bought that palette. Why would they buy another one? But again, I think this release is so like specifically targeted to a very specific consumer that I don't think it's a matter of concern for them at all that people already have Midnight Sun because they know that the true collectors out there are going to buy this palette again just for the outside packaging. Okay, so we can move on from that. Aside from that, something that I find quite interesting is the release of those uh, pot eyeshadows. She's never released pot eyeshadows before. Maybe she has in the original kits, I don't know, never seen those before. Uh, I'm taking now the little uh, dark galaxy palette here and the shade I want to use today is this beautiful like sort of bronzy based gold really really pretty shade i haven't used that shade in such a long time and she's releasing four of those eyeshadows and the colors of those eyeshadows are a like an anthracite gray with sparkle like a reddish shade like a bronzy gold and a peachy pink and here i want to like say a few words about one of the first things that crosses your mind when you just look at all the colors that are available uh, eyeshadow wise in this collection and i think the word that comes to everyone's mind is repetitive we've seen all of these including in her original star wars release like we've seen pinks we've seen reds we've seen those like anthracid purpley shades in her original release um but of course, since then a lot of people have joined the brand, a lot of people that don't have these eyeshadow palettes, so you know, I get it. She's not going to make products for people that collect her makeup since 2016, because that would be crazy. But at the same time, again, I feel like with Star Wars, there are a lot more color possibilities to explore than gold, pink and red. Don't you think? I think there, there's more to it. There's more to Star Wars than just that. There could be so many other sources of inspiration there, but you know, it's her collection, she decides. So in terms of these pot eyeshadows, the only one that I have somewhat of a mild interest in, I'm by the way blending that shade out here um, together with that reddish shade. I think they look really, really beautiful together. I have no interest in the peach pink, the red and the bronzy gold. Um, I am a little bit interested in that anthracite gray with the sparkles in it because it just looks, I don't know, it looks really, really interesting. How do they describe these? These are the Chroma Lux Artistry Pigments. Okay, uh, it's called Falcon Noir and it's a metallic anthracite with blue undertones. So that reminds me actually a little bit of Divine Mink from the um, Decadence palette. I don't know, I think I might grab that one because honestly it sounds like the kind of shade that I would really enjoy and I am 
kind of curious about the formula of those pot eyeshadows. I am going to go back into that dark galaxy palette and I'm going to take this shade which is sort of like a topper shade. It has a bit of like pink sparkles, a bit of golden sparkles. I think it's going to work really well as a topper for that gold shade and especially here uh, to marry the two shades together and just give a nice little interesting effect. And I think the item that um, the items that most of us here are probably interested in are D3 Queens. Now, I want to say real quick that once again I'm really disappointed that there's nothing in the baked formula because if there was ever a collection where you could like really play with the sparkle. Once again, it is such a missed opportunity that you're making a collection centered around, you know, adventures in space and on other planets and you're not making use of your Astral Blitz and VR shades. It, that's just very like I don't know, disappointing to me and 100% a missed opportunity. I want to tie this look together even further and um, put a little bit more of like definition here along my lash line. So I'm going to now go into the infamous Decadence palette, which um, despite being an underdog, I think is such a glorious palette. And I'm going to take this shade here, this beautiful warm purple aubergine. And I'm going to run that here in the outer corner and a bit along my uh, lower lashes because I think it will fit very nice with the tones of the other eyeshadows and create a little bit of depth here. So the three queens are, I expect, going to be a formula similar to the one that we got for the um, holiday collection, which is a really gorgeous formula. It's a very impactful, very glittery formula. Something that you need to be warned about is that two out of these three queens do not contain any matte eyeshadows. They are just metallic and like sparkly shadows. And I think one of the queens contains two mattes. Uh, let me see the names of these and what they are. So the three queens are called Divine Droid, Seed Seduction and the Golden One. The Golden One is also the boring one and it contains the two mattes. It's just like the most repetitive and boring, you know, peachy, browny, gold quint that I think a lot of people are not going to be moved by at all. And the truly interesting uh, quint in this collection undoubtedly is the Sith one because it contains that beautiful, smoky, uh, bronzy, olivey green shade. It's always re really hard to say just from pictures because two of these eyeshadows look kind of similar to each other. Uh, the one that's like the champagne, the standard champagne sparkly shade and the one that's on the very other side that's like a taupey sparkly shade. I don't know, but I trust in Mother that this quint is going to be really beautiful and really special. So I'm definitely going to be picking that one up. And I'm actually thinking about picking up the one with the light blue eyeshadow in there specifically because of the light blue and this is the Divine Droid um, also because R2D2 on the packaging is actually quite cute so I think I'm going to pick up these two queens and I'm possibly going to dip my toes into those pot eyeshadows because I'm just very curious about the formula of those I'm now just going to sort of smoke this purple together with the rest of the shade so it looks a bit more seamlessly blended in there like so and then I'm going to grab a tiny bit more and I'm going to run right here a little bit on the outer portion of my uh, lower lashes and on the inner portion I'm going to put actually another shade. I'm now going to grab this shade from the um, Decadence palette which is one of my favorites. It's this beautiful smoky I'm sorry I think I started watching something on TV downstairs so it got a bit loud. I sincerely hope you can hear it. The name of that shade is Inferno. And I'm going to run just a little bit of that here to complete the look on my lower lash, lash, lash line because I think it fits the vibes of the look and it just gives me the opportunity to use yet another shade from Decadence. And then we're going to do a bit of inner corner highlighting and call this a day. I'm very curious what you think about this collection. I'm not disappointed you guys because I don't think this collection is meant to be part of you know her regular lineup with all the newness that we expect from her regular lineup. On my inner corners I'm just going to take a little bit of this shade here which is the shade gold standard, the quintessential pet gold. 
All in all, I don't think there are any repetitions in terms of the eyeshadows in these palettes. I don't uh, know, of course, all the names, but based on what I can see, I don't think any of those are repetitions she already has in her collection. I think they're probably going to be new, as much as gold can really be new. But anyway, I think this pretty much sums up all of my thoughts on this collection. And now I think I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. What are you picking up? I really hope that this isn't going to be as stressful as her previous release and we will have enough time to pick up the items that we are interested in. Also remember when I said that I didn't own any of the glosses that were being released in the Star Wars collection? I was lying. I actually own Carnal Desire as it is. I'm wearing it today over... Um, which one was that? This is Negligee, which was part of the Bridgerton 2 collection, which is sort of like a peachy nude as a base. And over top of that, I applied a little bit of Carnal Desire. And Carnal Desire is like a clear base in which you have suspended like gold and red sparkle. It's a really, really beautiful gloss. I really love her glosses. I bought this as a set together with two other red lip glosses and um, you are not going to be able to see now because I smooshed it all around, but they actually have just a little bit left of this gloss, so I do actually quite enjoy this gloss. But with that said, I would just go and purchase it on sale uh, in the normal packaging. I don't really need it to have Star Wars logos across it. My overall feeling about this collection is that I'm not disappointed, but I'm also, you know, not jumping with joy. Because like I said, to me, both of these collections so far has have sort of been missed opportunities to do something so much more with the theme. Um, I feel like this collection is more premeditated than the previous one. The previous one seemed a bit more like an afterthought. This one seems a bit more premeditated and there are quite a few more products being released. I can't be completely sure of that, but based on previous experience with the two six pans that were released for the Star Wars collaboration the previous time, it is possible that if the queens sell out, they may come back in normal packaging at some point. So, um, I mean, Midnight Sun, you guys already have those liquid lusts and gloss things. Honestly, the only reason I would tell you to go out and fight people on release days if it's you, is if you really, really want them to be in the limited edition packaging. And let's all collectively hope that she's going to deal with this release a lot better than the previous one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!